Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here in the mighty Minitropolis of Marnie, Iowa, and look what we have in front of us today. This is the mighty Royal Enfield Classic 350. Da, da, da. I think that is a 348 or 349 cc single cylinder, single overhead cam, two valve or cylinder, five speed gearbox. It's a, uh, it's got a counter rotating bouncing shaft right here in the front to keep the thing smooth and it is a very smooth bike. The motor puts out about 20 horsepower and about as much uh, torque, 20 foot-pounds of torque, maybe 27 newton meters I believe, something like that. Uh, it's a very interesting machine in that way. Like I said, it has a six-speed transmission. There's the gear shifter there. Uh, kind of a good-looking machine really, a very good looking, honestly it's a very good-looking machine. But, uh, Wheelbase on this, I think, is 54.7 inches, which is, uh, if I remember right, 1,369 millimeters, 1,389, let's say 1,369. Um, the uh, seat height is 31.7 inches, I believe. That's uh, 805 millimeters. And the weight of the motorcycle is supposed to be around 430 pounds, or about 195 kilograms. Very, very nice motorcycle. By the way, I'm wearing the helmet when I do this today because it's very windy here. This is, uh, we're gonna put a couple hundred miles on this one. So I might make one or two or three videos to cover it. So today is day one of this thing. The bike has about three and a half miles on it. We're gonna take it easy because it's a break in. Um, and we're just gonna kind of enjoy this thing. I have wanted to ride one of these for quite a while. The, the reason is one, it's a very attractive motorcycle. Somebody like me, uh, who's attracted to this bike? Well. Somebody that wants a classic looking thing. This says a lot of the looks of the uh, old bullets or the 1932 is the th first bullet, I think. And this has a lot of styling cues that go back to that. Yeah. Would this be a good beginner bike? That's another category that everybody talks about. And uh, yes, it is. It's a great beginner bike. I've ridden this bike and uh, it's very compliant. It's very, uh, very easy going. It does exactly what you want to do. It's very stable. The clutch is excellent. And by the way, I want to just point out something about the clutch. It's got this very wide area right here, and that makes for a good feel on the fingertips, you know. Uh, this particular model, this particular bike has some add-ons. We've got the crash bars up front here, a nice chrome crash bar, octagon sided. And then it's got these beautiful Royal Enfield, uh, I think they're called military bags. I think they slip on on the back here, and then, oh, there you go, slip on the back, and then latch these bottom latches. It looks like there's Velcro there. Kind of an interesting thing that, uh, I was thinking about who I know that has these motorcycles, and I've got three particular friends that have this particular motorcycle, the Classic, and each one of them are avid motorcycle riders with many, many much larger, or at least other much larger, much more powerful motorcycles. Uh, Gary, a friend of mine, has a 800 Tiger. He was an old dirt bike racer. He had a KLR. A lot of experience with motorcycles. He bought himself one of this and he rides it all the time. Another friend of mine, Mark, he uh, lives close by. He's got, He's got plenty of amazing motorcycles. And he has one of these that he bought and uh, he rides it all the time. And then our good friend Jim up here, he, uh, <laughs> He has it in his stable of bikes. He's got several motorcycles and, and they again ride it often. So what makes this thing, this 350cc single cylinder, 20 horsepower motorcycle so appealing to these veteran riders? That's what I want to find out. I love the way the classic looks. You know, it's got metal fenders. It's got this cast aluminum housing up here. It's got the, uh, I call them tiger eyes. Other people call them pilot lights. You know, it's got these very attractive hand grips. Everything, you know, these are the all the mall style grips, you know, these bar ends. Uh, it's just a very good looking bike. Um, anyway, I want to find out what it's all about. And uh, I think a good way to do that is put some miles on her. So, you know what? Let's go do that, huh? I'm going to put some gloves on. I've got these, I don't know what these are, Alpine Star gloves. And just, they're very warm and very comfortable. So what happens here? Turn the key on, cycles, neutral light, battery light, ABS light, engine light, um, little... Got a uh, digital fuel gauge down here, odometer, trip meter. I wonder how you get to that. There's a button over here that says informational. Let's try that. Trip one, trip two. Let's uh, zero out trip two. Okay, and that will give us a clue on how many miles we put on this hot rod. Uh, up here we've got uh, high beams, pass the flash included. So there's pass the flash, flash to pass. I'm flash to pass, I'm sorry. Horn button down low, blinkers right here. Here we have the kill switch, start switch, 
the starters right there, and then hazard that's hazards down there. So let's make this thing go. Five, four, three, two, one. Kickstand is up. There's the ABS light still on. Uh, the brakes on this, I think, are 300 millimeter on the front, and uh, I think it's a 270 on the rear. It's a very large one on the rear. This bike has got uh, 6.7 inches of ground clearance, so that kind of a road is no problem. I think that's uh, 120, 170 millimeters, I'm sorry, 170 millimeters. And travel for the rear and the front is 5.1 inches, which is about 125 millimeters. Look at that, that clutch just, all the torque is at the bottom. If you're in the market for a new or used Royal Enfield or Triumph, there is Baxter Cycle here in Marney, Iowa. BaxterCycle.com, give those guys a call. Tell them Fuzzy Biker sent you, they love hearing that. All right, let's do a little uh, twist here. Spin, spin, spin. Very good, very good indeed. Anybody behind us in the other way? Nope. Let's try this direction. Absolutely fine. What did I say? 54.7 inches. 1,389 millimeters. There is the derailleur grill. If you ever come to Marnie, Iowa, give those guys a try. I will catch up with you all shortly. Wahoo! Alrighty, we have made our way to Atlantic, Iowa. Home of Coca-Cola in Iowa. There's the Fairway store. Let's see what this is. I think that's part of the Atlantic Bottling Company. It's a very windy day here today. I mean, uh, 40, probably 40 mile an hour gust. The motorcycle got blown around quite a bit on the highway. Uh, I tried to keep the speed down because it's, you know, new miles. It did, it did pretty good. Uh, the 400 and some odd pounds that it weighs did pretty good to keep it stable. But it did get blown around, of course. And then going into the wind, it really took a lot of power. I don't know that I could have gotten much faster than what I was going. As far as the seating goes and comfort goes, so far so good. I'm very comfortable on the bike. It's got a large seat, nice wide seat, which is something I like. The handlebars are low and forward, but they're not. You're not reaching down to them. They're uh, in a very good spot. Works very well. So this is the another old part of town, the old railroad depot down here. Rock Island, it says. Can you see? Okay, look at this. Green Bay Lumber Company, 1915. The old hardware store. Chamber of Commerce, Rock Island. This is, I think, the old railroad depot. Here on the left is, well, that looks like the original Coca-Cola building. 1940, it says, for the old part. Anyway, what a great day for a ride. You know what, guys, I shall, uh, I think I'm gonna make my way to the next town and uh, we'll see what we can find there, okay? We are rolling into Anita, Iowa. Anita, Iowa is, we're about, look, about 21 miles away from Marnie. This is historic Route 6 or White Pole Road or whatever that is. Um, anyway, the uh, motorcycle, well, let's talk about my jacket real quick. I'm wearing this Cardinal Law, Royal Enfield Cardinal Law jacket, and uh, I took the liner out of it because I was worried it was gonna be too warm. I rode, uh, rode over the last week in the 50s and I was hot, so I took that out, and today it's in the 60s, and uh, I had to pull over, I had to get rid of my gloves. I've had to open all the vents on the front and in the arms, I don't know if you can see that. And uh, just to get myself cooled down, this jacket is warm. It stops the wind. Uh, there are more vents on the back of the jacket, and I could also open the front up more. If I, if I were to open the vents in the back, I think I would get blow through, and that'd be much more comfortable, I believe. Uh, it's not uncomfortable. It's just uh, definitely a warm jacket. This is a very good cool weather jacket. I'm not sure how it's going to work as a warmer weather jacket. <laughs> Gee, I'll have to get another jacket, right? Okay, to the bike. Um, I'm going to kind of, I think I'm going to end the video at this point by telling you my conclusion so far. And we'll pick back up on this again uh, the next day. And the reason I'm going to do that is I want to ride the bike and enjoy it. Uh, so the uh, seating is excellent. I am sitting with my knees, my feet are almost below my knees, slightly back maybe. Very, you know, middle of the road pedals. My... Uh, Handlebars are in a good spot. My back is straight. My handlebars are in a good spot. I'm reaching down to them. Not too bad at all. The bike is relatively comfortable. It's got a very comfortable wide seat, I would say, at this point. You know, with 22 miles on it. <laughs> the uh, mirrors, they do vibrate. I don't know if you can see that right there. They vibrate on the highway. They vibrate here. Um, it's a low frequency vibration, so you can still really see. But the mirrors are placed in a good spot. Um, I'm not really seeing much shoulder. Most bikes I hop on, 
the first thing I think is uh, the mirrors need to be farther out. On this bike, I think the mirrors are in a good spot. Um, the grips are this barrel shape, wider in the center than they are at the edges. That matches your hand, and uh, I'm very happy with that. I like that. Very good. As far as power goes, uh, running into the wind, the bike was, uh, you, could, you could tell. I mean, I had a hard time holding 50 in a lot of places. But we have got some really strong winds today. When the wind was blowing from the side, the bike was relatively stable. It was blowing around, but it does have good mass. And it, this is a very stable motorcycle, I would say. Um, it's the kind of motorcycle that you can enjoy what's out of the motorcycle, outside of the, you know, the scenery, the, what's going on beyond the bike. It's a very enjoyable riding bike. And I think that's why my experienced motorcycle riding friends have bought this and latched onto it. They want to go ride the bike, they don't, they don't want to have to worry about the motorcycle, they want to enjoy the scenery, enjoy the weather, enjoy the, they, so they grab, that's why they bought the uh, classics. So would this be a good beginner bike? I think this would be a fabulous beginner bike. I think this would be a fabulous, I haven't ridden bikes in 30 years, and I want to get back into a bike. I think this, uh, I, I'm starting to think that I like this bike myself quite a bit, honestly. But like I said, I only have 23 miles on it, so. Anyway, conclusion at this point, it's a nifty motorcycle and I, I love the way it looks, I love the way it handles, and I love the way it rolls. Alright my friends, if it's nice where you're at, get out there and ride. Wahoo!